All right, let's uh, kick it off. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the sixth meeting of Two Rivers Entrepreneur Connection, or as we like to call it, Trek. Uh, Trek is a monthly gathering of entrepreneurs, mentors, advisors, and others to educate, engage, and connect entrepreneurs. Our organizing team picked the name Trek because we know that the road to being successful entrepreneur is not a sprint, it's a trek. And we are here to be a strong partner on your entrepreneur, entrepreneurial journey. Everyone is welcome. Our meetings are open to anyone um, who is interested in hearing, supporting, connecting with all the area's entrepreneurs. Uh, there's no attendance requirements. There's no membership fees. Um, our gatherings are run by entrepreneurs for entrepreneurs. Each month we'll have two featured pre presenters, one that's possibly been in the business for a few years and one that might be a new or emerging entrepreneur. Meetings are the first Tuesday of each month, 9 a.m. to 9.50 a.m. Um, while this meeting is being held virtually, we sure hope that we can be in person soon. We, um, before the second round of shutdowns, we <coughs> did get to have one that was uh, in person and it was amazing. Um, the session is being recorded. We plan to share it on social media. So keep that in mind as you make questions. Um, please mute yourself if you have background noise, but don't forget to unmute yourself as we'd love to hear your questions um, if you have any. There will always be time for question and answer after each presenter is done talking. Um, if you don't feel comfortable talking, feel free to put it in the chat box and Michelle is um, watching that chat box so she can read the question for you if you don't feel comfortable talking. Um, our Trek guides, which are our, what we call ourselves, um, are Mike Berry, Beth Nelson, Brian Carlson, John Sievertson, Kendall Dehan, Kelsey Brodding, me, Angie Westling, and Michelle Lambert. Um, and today we have some students from Mr. Rogala's class. Mr. Rogala, would you like to kind of tell us a little bit about what your class is? Yeah. So, uh, you know, thanks for letting us uh, join your group. I have 21 uh, students in, uh, in marketing uh, that range anywhere from ninth graders to seniors. And uh, we're kind of in our first six weeks. Oh, you guys turn that down. Sorry about that. Um, and we've, uh, we've been going at it here now. This is our sixth week. And uh, we uh, are just starting to learn a little bit about uh, entrepreneurship and running our own businesses. And, you know, we did have Kim Rosendahl join us uh, about a month ago to kind of give us in, some insight on uh, running his own business. And we're just excited to be here to kind of hear some things. About Who's got their volume on, guys? Sorry well, about that's that. That's great. Hopefully they'll be able to get some good information out of this. We have a couple of really good presenters today. So. I'm glad you guys can join us. Yes, and I do see some old students, and one of them's presenting today. So, oh, that's awesome. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Um, and then, Michelle, I think you had some announcements. Yeah, just a couple of real brief things. Um, first of all, I just want to mention the Now Innovators Network. Uh, this is uh, something that's available for entrepreneurs in Northwest Minnesota. So uh, the Thief River Falls area is part of that. And it's a whole bunch of resources um, that can help you on your entrepreneurial journey. So I would encourage you to check out, there's a new website, nownetworkmn.com, nownetworkmn.com. And um, so just check that out. Um, part of that is it's part of the Launch Minnesota program. Uh, of the state of Minnesota. So there are some innovation grants as well that are available. I'd love to see uh, Thief River Falls Entrepreneur get one of those grants. Uh, they're up to $35,000. So um, if you have questions about that, I would love to uh, chat with you about that and I can you know, help, you, uh, help you on your uh, discovery process there. Um, I am a navigator in the Now Innovator Network, so um, I can help you with that. And then um, just, just to remind everybody that uh, the PPP program will close March 31st. So if, you've, if you are still thinking about applying for that, uh, you still can. 
and uh, economic injury disaster loans are also uh, still being accepted. So just, just wanted to make everybody aware of that. Henry. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Well, before we get into our first presenter, we like to give things away. So um, the first one is gonna be for our best mug. Beth Nelson at Northern State Bank is going to pick your best mug. So if you have a glass or a cup or a mug or whatever in front of you, hold it up to the camera. You can hold it up. Oh gosh, let's see. Oh, I love Mike's. I see that one. I've seen that one before. You know what, I, Kelsey, I gotta give it to you. <laughs> I'm not even sure what that is, but it's adorable. <laughs> Better made it. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's what I feel like in the morning until I have my coffee. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so Kel Kelsey, you can stop and pick that up. Um, I've got the mugs here at at um, Hometown Realty that you can stop and pick them up. Um, and Kelsey, you're gonna introduce our first presenter. All right, so our first presenter joining us today will be talking about the Black Barn, a family-owned retail shop just outside of Thief River. Uh, John and Brenda Hamry have spent the last 30 years traveling and visiting small shops and opened the Black Barn last November to offer unique, uh, a unique rural shopping experience. Um, so we have Brenda joining us today, along with Avery, uh, who is the one behind the photography, graphic design, and social media. Um, so we are excited for you guys to be with here, you know, be with us today, and uh, excited to hear your guys' story. So, thank you, Thanks. thank you for having us. Yeah, excited to be here. Uh, it's not a very long story. We're very new to this, so um, we don't have a whole lot of experience under our belt yet, but um, what brought us here was probably just wanting to um, give back to a community that has been a home to, um, we raised, John and I raised our kids here. We were raised here. Our parents were raised here. I don't know where my grandparents were born, but they raised their families here. So including my two little grandsons, Avery's two little boys, we're a fifth generation to be in this community. And we just thought, you know, we, we, you know, we owe it an awful lot. So let's just try to give back in some way that we can, that we can do that. So um, Black Barn was kind of born of um, partly uh, opportunity that presented itself. Um, I think most ladies that like to shop have always kind of had a little whisper in their ear of maybe having their own shop and a little flicker kind of turned into a flame when um, we had the opportunity to build a new building that would house a little shop and family coming back and wanting to and being willing to contribute their talents and, and expertise in, in every way to make this family business um, be able to be in existence because I could never do this without them there. They, um, they help in every way, behind the scenes, um, behind the till, I mean, every way, it's definitely a family affair and, and we're all hands on deck and it includes Avery, um, my husband, John, of course, which is in charge of keeping me educated in all things business. He's um, been a part of a business and an owner of a business for 37 years. His, his family has a small business and Thank goodness for him because I'm not business minded at all. I'm much more on the creative side and he's, he's educating me every day. Um, our son Brady is behind the scenes with all the heavy lifting and the freight and the inventory and um, whatever we need him to do, he's there for us. My mom's part of the team. She's part of the creative um, energy in here and the, and the um, customer service and inspiration for all things. Um, Avery's husband, Joe, does some baking and contributes to our little shop with some fresh baked goods and it's become a, a family affair. Um, the path here has mostly been just being on the other side of the counter, just being um, customers of small businesses and really loving the experience you have when you walk into a shop that's been handpicked and hand curated. You get to speak with the owner. Um, it's a connection that I think society has kind of lost just with online shopping and big stores and discount stores, which are all valuable and all have their place. And I just think it would be nice if society could kind of swing back to the small business again and have that one-on-one -on -one with um, 
customers and owners having that connection. So the goal was to create a place that people can come and, and feel that connection, feel valued. And um, if there's something they're looking for, have somebody personally help them or order it in for them or remember the kind of candle they like and always have it on the shelf for them. You know, it's just the little things in life that kind of mean something to people, especially people that love home and love creating a home. And that's kind of my wheelhouse. Um, I've done some odd jobs over the last 30 years. Most of that time was spent being a, a stay-at-home mom, um, but I did a home daycare for a while. Um, I had a house cleaning business for eight years, which I just left last spring. And Avery has got a little more um, education in her background than I do. She's uh, gone to school in Chicago and in Grand Forks and learned her photography and graphic design and is willing to share that knowledge and that expertise with, with me to really make Black Barn what it is, which is just an emerging small business trying to find its place. Um, I don't really know what else to contribute. Um, that's pretty much the story. Well, I think that's a great story. Um, I love hearing it and I'm sure everyone else did too. One question that I have for you, um, kind of more based towards Avery, I guess, is with your with your skills and stuff, are you kind of the one that does the, I know you're very predominant on social media. Right. You guys are amazing. I mean, yeah. especially for a new business, I'm seeing it everywhere on, on social media. So is that kind of kind of your That's tool? Is that, okay. Um, yeah, and that, that was, that was a, uh, an important aspect of this going into it. And it took many months like leading up to it. Um, we did everything ourselves. We um, designed our own logo, our own sign outside that's um, posted up. I mean, everything we do in house here. And that was pretty important to me to have a big social media presence because that's huge for our business, especially being out in the Thule's, you know, <laughs> um, we want to get the word out and no better way to do it than that. Um, so yeah, we're, I went into it thinking, okay, well, I don't just want content. I want quality content. So that's where um, you know, I had, like she mentioned, I have background in photography and graphic design. It's very fitting that Mr. Rogal is here because I remember <laughs> his web design class well, and I enjoyed it very much. So, um, but yeah, that was kind of where I got my feet wet, I guess, in high school. Um, but yep, I went on to study graphic design and photography. So I really utilized those things to bring to Black Barn because thankfully, yeah. I can barely turn a computer on, and that is the truth. Well, in this day and age, it's it's pretty important to you know get the word out there and and do it well. That's that's kind of my thing. Is yeah, I like to yeah. She's got such talent. My mom is much most of the creativity behind Black Barn, so it's my job to bring it to people to to put it out there. Yeah, we make a good team. Everybody has talents, and everybody contributes something and that is what makes it possible. I've learned that there's nothing occasional about an occasional shop except your opportunity to make money. <laughs> yep. Everything else has been a lot more work but it's really been enjoyable and we're learning every day and I take my hat off to all that have come before us because I appreciate shop owners on a whole different level now. And it's, um, right. it's a labor of love but it's definitely a labor. Well, you can you can tell definitely by by your social media and by going out to your shop. I've been out there a couple times myself, and you can tell the love that's put into it. And and Thank Avery, you. big time hats off to you because you guys yeah. came out strong on social media, and and right now that's kind of where the advertising is at, you know. And why not use it? Great. So you you've utilized it well. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any, does anybody else have questions for Brenda and Avery? I have a question. Okay. How did you with the name and how many other names did you pick from to get that name? That's a great name. That was the only name. Yeah. I knew that when we rebuilt the building, um, I wanted it black. Black's my favorite color. I love all things black. Um, I wanted a big black barn. Um, it's just not something you see that often. And I just had envisioned it for a long time. Our, our previous building that sat on this exact footprint uh, collapsed uh, February 21st, 2019 due to snow and ice on the roof. Um, shocking. So all of our belongings and 30 years of collecting was scrapped. Um, so we kind of started out 
fresh and new. And we said, okay, well, we were heartbroken because we had a lot of really um, wonderful memories associated with the building that was here. And we thought, well, you know what, let's make it even better and have even more memories. So we have always wanted to share this spot. We actually built our house in 2000 with the idea that it would be a bed and breakfast. So it's designed to be a bed and breakfast. But over the years, we kind of changed our idea and our, and our mission. And having grandkids, we love a place they can come and go every day. And we didn't want that to be off limits. So when we had the opportunity to rebuild this, we just thought, well, here's a good way to share this piece of property and to share what we have. And let's, let's open the little shop that's always kind of been in the back of our minds. Um, so in, in envisioning it and thinking about it, I, I had a vision for a big black barn and I wanted it to look nice with our house. And there's only certain things that can go with our house because our house is what it is and it's got to stay that way. It won't be changed. Um, so I just thought, well, let's go for it. And the builders thought I was nuts, but <laughs> they did approve once it was done. They liked it. And I, what other word would fit it than black barn? <laughs> Simple, okay, easy to remember. When we were trying to come up with a name for it, I was, came to mom with ideas and she's like, I, I already have it figured out. It's black barn. It's black barn. So. <laughs> it's easy it's to perfect. remember. Yeah. It's perfect. And the building is beautiful, but I Thank have to you. tell you kind of a funny story. So my daughter, well, I'm a realtor. So I talk about houses all the time. And when I look at houses, I always, oh, I wish I could go in that house. You know, I would, and we came out to the black barn and my youngest daughter, she said, mom, let's ask them if we can go through their house. You're a realtor. It's okay. I'm like, no, <laughs> no, we're here to see the black barn. We're not going in their house. As long as so. you bring a Swiffer through, you're fine. You can do it anytime. <laughs> Yeah. So, I, I actually have a question. Yeah. So, Brenda, I'm curious. You, you talk about you were envisioning, you know, this business and what it would be and everything. I'm so, how was it? What the day actually was like? Like, what was different about? You know, was, there's always things that we envision, and then there's the way that it actually is. And so, was there different challenges that came up that you didn't foresee? Is the day to day what you thought it was going to be like? How did the envisioning differ from the reality of, of running the business? Uh, the biggest difference is the amount of time that it takes. I thought it would just be something fun on the side for all of us. It's become um, more than a full time job just because of the level we want to keep it at. Um, the, the amount of time dedicated to it is is the biggest. The biggest uh, surprise to me in order to, to, to have it where we want it to be. It takes a ton of time um, behind the scenes and, and with what people see, keeping things stocked, especially during these times, finding places that can ship and stock our shelves. Um, that's probably pretty much. They like, I mean, I've heard many times that do what you love and you won't work a day in your life. If you want to be your own boss, be prepared to work. Harder, Long hours. harder than you ever have, but it's twice the reward. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, lots of great questions. Uh, and at the end, we'll have some more time. If, if people have more questions to you, we need to get on to our second presenter. So I thank you guys very much. But if you want to stick around, like I said, we might have some, some time at the end that people sure. might have more questions for you. Okay. Uh, Mike, would you like to introduce Jordan? Absolutely. Uh, very good job, Brenda and Avery. We appreciate it. Our next presenter is Jordan Espeseth. Jordan was born and raised in Thief River Falls and graduated from Lincoln High School in 2008. Jordan will always say that his roots are his hometown of Thief River. And when I asked Jordan if he'd like to be our presenter, he was just more than willing to share his story, his journey and his experiences with us. His comment was, I wanna inspire as well as being inspired. So here's Jordan to share his journey. Welcome, Jordan. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, everybody. Hey, my internet uh, is saying it's unstable, so I apologize if I cut in and out. Um, I should have decent internet, but it's, it keeps telling me it's unstable. So maybe it's a sign to me. Maybe it's calling me unstable. I don't know. That could be true, too. But, um, <laughs> uh, but I'm excited to be here. I was really pumped when Mike told me about this group and, and uh, the, uh, to be able to share a bit about my story. And I think this group is so awesome. Um, you know, I can tell Mike when we're talking, he has such a passion for entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship and uh, Mike was actually my first boss. I don't know if I was uh, his best employee by any means, um, but um, uh, 
uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for, for Mike and I love what you guys are putting on with this group. So I appreciate you having me coming on, on and I see some people I know, Kim Rosendahl is my man. I see Drew and Carter. I uh, love, love seeing you guys again. And so, um, yeah, to hop in really quick, I know they said I got about 10 minutes. That's going to be tough for me, but I'm going to, I'm going to do what I can. So, uh, yeah, as, as they said, I, I grew up in, in, in Thiefer Falls. Uh, my whole life, I raced snowcross from age three till age 17. That was my entire life. I'm sure being from Thiefer Falls, you guys know what snowcross is. And uh, I, I always thought I was going to go. Oh, and, and after my junior year of high school, I retired as a semi-pro on the national circuit. Um, as I wanted to have kind of a normal life, snowcross was amazing, but it took up every time. And, and um, you know a normal senior year and hang out with my friends and play football which I never got to do and but being that I always thought I legit always thought I'd go pro not until I quit snowcross and I was in my senior year was I like oh man what should I do for my life <laughs> like I never truly thought about what I should do it was always going to be snowcross and so um, after some him and han I decided on becoming a nurse and uh, the sole reason was because my friends were doing it uh, you could get a job anywhere and I thought it paid decent and I liked helping people and I was like, nursing it is. And so I, I took a year of generals at Northland and in Thiefer Falls, played some baseball there. Uh, then I went to NDSU my sophomore year. I got into the nursing program my junior year. Halfway through my nursing program, I decided it was not for me and I quit. Um, I still did not know at that point what I wanted to do. I ended up getting a random bachelor's degree from NDSU and that was five years of schooling. And I still was lost. I still had no idea what I wanted to do. I had some friends doing physical therapy. So I said, Hey, I like physical therapy. I like to work out. That sounds great. But I was not about to go get a doctorate after being in school for five years. So I decided to get a physical therapy assistant uh, degree in East Grand Forks. And I graduated two years later as a physical therapist assistant. And I worked in Texas for uh, central Texas as a traveling physical therapist for seven months. Uh, and then I went entrepreneurial. So I, I, I went to college for seven years. I worked for seven months with my degree. And then I went entrepreneurial. And um, as you can imagine, my dad was really uh, pumped about that. Um, but, um, by the way, I realized I still can't spell entrepreneurial. I tried it many times. I need autocorrect to, to help me with it. And so it shows that you don't have to be the smartest person to have a successful business. Um, but um, so before I share the rest of my story, I want to kind of take back to when I was 20 years old, I got introduced to a concept that I'm convinced wrecked me when it comes to like nine to five uh, employment jobs. And that was a, 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 a company called World Ventures. It was a network marketing company. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar uh, with MLMs and network marketing. And it was the first time that I was ever introduced to the concept of entrepreneurialism and being your own boss and making your own money and, and your own schedule and residual money. And, and, you know, the whole idea that you will actually never become truly wealthy if you're paid for your time, if you're paid hour by hour. And, just the energy of, of that network marketing company and the passion and the personal development aspect of it, it absolutely just shattered my whole perceptions of work. And, and um, I was hooked. I absolutely loved it. And I, I, um, I didn't make much money at all when I was with World Ventures. In fact, I probably just uh, annoyed most of my friends and family, but um, I saw a future and I wanted it. And fast forward to 25 years old, when I graduated as a, as a traveling uh, PTA, and I was working in Texas, I knew deep down that that was not where I wanted to end up. I was just kind of, you know, working and buying time until I figured out how I could get out of the, the nine to five world and, and get into that entrepreneurial world. And I think it was about three weeks of when I moved and, and being a PTA, I came across the world of life coaching and I absolutely loved it. And so while I was working as a PTA, I started getting training in, in, a, in a life coaching company. And um, I didn't mention this, but while I was in college, I dealt with an enormous amount of anxiety and even depression. And, and uh, it was likely due to, uh, partly due to the fact that I had no idea what my future was going to look like. And I had a lot of apprehension about that. And I, um, I ended up getting very big into personal development and meditation and reading. And through that, I cured my anxiety and depression in a natural way. And I was like, man, I can help others do that same thing. And so I got certified as a life coach. I quit working as a PTA. And a couple of years, uh, I, I worked that for a couple of years. I worked that business, and I had a handful of clients, and I even got trained at a second life coaching company, and I learned a ton. And and one thing I learned is that most people want to get coached on how to make money, um, and financially, I was not successful at that time, and so I didn't quite feel right 
coaching people unless it was around, you know, health and meditation and all that stuff. Um, so I did that for a couple of years for a short while in 2017 and or maybe it was 16. I, I, I lived in Toronto, Canada, uh, and, and did some event promotion and, uh, went door to door to businesses doing that event promotion. And it was absolutely awful. Uh, but I learned a ton and it was, it was a great experience. And while I was there, I got introduced to another network marketing company called send out cards and send out cards is from your computer or phone. You can create a customized greeting card and uh, our company will print it, stuff it, stamp it, and mail it for you. I actually think I presented it to Angie at one point, um, way back when. And because um, we, what we did was we decided to travel around the country in 2017, speaking at real estate um, events, teaching real estate agents how to use send out cards to prospect for sale by owners and expireds and cultivate their leads list. And we were literally in a different city every single night, every single day. And for about eight months or so, we did that. And we were having some decent success, but I was getting tired of driving all the time and staying in Airbnbs and Priceline hotels. And so we were wrapping up that whole send out cards tour and I had about three events left and I was in Topeka, Kansas. And I ran into another lady who was sponsoring that same real estate event. And she was with a company called Real Producers. And uh, she heard me speak and she was like, man, I think you'd be really good at, at this Real Producers thing. Would you be interested in hearing more about it? And so I was like, sure, you know, I was open to it at the time. And I, she got me connected with the right people. I did the interviews and the next thing, um, you know, they hired me. And so that was, I went to training in January of 2018. And on my 28th birthday, February 6, 2018, I hopped in my car and I drove 1300 miles to Frisco, Texas to start um, Real Producers. And I didn't know a single person, not one person in a, in a Metroplex of 7.5 million people. Um, I did not know one. And so Real Producers very quickly, we're, we're a national franchise. It started in, in, in one market in 2015, which was Indianapolis. We're now in over a hundred markets nationwide. I run uh, the Real Producers here in, 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 in Dallas. Dallas Fort Worth. And essentially what it is, is um, we create a community around the best producing real estate agents and best uh, businesses in this market. And uh, we have a monthly real estate publication that goes to the top 500 producing real estate agents in the market, where we, uh, we share their stories, their successes, take a glimpse into their personal lives. And, and um, we throw big events. So that publication goes out physically and digitally every single month. Here's a, if you guys can see, here's one of, one of our issues. Um, so I get to put those together every single month and, and, um, we throw big events as well, where we invite the top 500 producing real estate agents and, and our business partners, which are lenders, titles, roofers, inspectors, those businesses that work with real estate agents and get a lot of referrals from them. They, uh, they get ad space within our publication and actually fund the whole operation. And so, um, I started, I started uh, one of those back in 2018 and, Holy smokes, man! We we talk about starting a business, and 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 um, it was it was not what I expected it would be. The thing with real producers is it's a franchise, and so you own your franchise. You don't pay to 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 have the franchise, but they will um, if if they hire you through the right person. It takes typically six months um, of building the business before you go to print, and you don't get paid until you go to print. And over half the people that attempt don't even actually even make it to print. And so the risk is, is, Hey, I might, I might move to Texas and I might not even make this happen. And at the time I was actually, I was about 65, 70 K in debt. And, um, and I'm going to go work for six months for no pay on a, on a, on a whim and hoping I can make something happen. And I had so much riding on it personally, because I felt like through all these different endeavors that I had done, whether that be Snowcross or the network marketing companies or the life coaching. And, uh, um, I felt like I had, you know, nursing school, I, I uh, physical therapy. I felt like I had failed a lot in my life and I was just kind of bumbling around to a bunch of different things. And I, I felt like a lot of my friends and family were like, man, what is Jordan doing? Why doesn't he just get a job and, 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 you know, settle down. Like, what's he trying to chase this dream for? And, and so I felt like, man, this is my last chance. I need to make this happen. And if I don't, um, I felt like I was going to be in a very dark place because I had such a, I had a very bad association with nine to five jobs in, in the corporate world. And there's nothing, there's no, nothing inherently wrong with them. It's with my personality. It did not fit and it, it scared the crap out of me. And so it was, I had so much riding on this and I, it, it took me, it took me about six months to go to print, but it was 50 days, five, zero 
uh, 50 days from when I moved till when I made my very first sale. And this is 100% commission based. If you don't sell, you don't make money. And um, it was it was actually 40 appointments. So I sat down with 40 different businesses and an hour long presentation and got told no 40 times. And it was 50 days later. And by the way, normally it's 10. Like for most people, it's, it, you get you get told no 10 times and then you start making sales. It was 40 times. And man, my tail was absolutely in between my legs and I didn't think it was going to happen. And I was so grateful that finally it did and I started to build it and it all started to come together. It was not a breeze once I went to print. I had a lot of challenges for the first three months once I launched the business. But then it, 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 in, in November of 2018, I had my very first launch party. I had 200 people there and uh, my business absolutely exploded at that point. And it really came together in a beautiful moment. And um, fast forward to, you know, I'm now in, I've now produced 30 two of these publications we go every single month um and i actually started and took I, I i'm now running as of january of this year i took over two more real producers so there's three real producers here in dallas fort worth i took over the, my, one of my buddies launched dallas real producers which is just a different area of the metro that he focused on i just took that over in january so now i have that business i'm running and then i just launched one in tarrant county which is essentially fort worth and arlington um, so I, I just launched my third real producers. And so and I have three of them that I'm running right now. Um, I, I've grown a team. I have full-time employees. And it's it's been an absolutely amazing journey. Um, and uh, I'm so grateful for it. But it's not for the faint of heart. That's for sure. There are so many challenges along the way. But man, I wake up um, most days absolutely loving what, what I'm doing. And uh, um you know, I'd have, I have a ton of tips and, and lessons and stuff. I'm sure there's questions, but um, in terms of the journey, that that's really it. And I'm sure I am probably well over 10 minutes. So Angie, Michelle, I'm going to stop and let you guys, Mike, you guys uh, take it from there. <laughs> well, Jordan, I was just going to gonna say, like, this is this sounds like it's a great one for um, Carter's class to be on, Mr. Rogala's class to be on, because, you know, it really shows them not not to really get get down on themselves, you know, like, I would say that that most of us, and you're still young, but most of us, this is not the first thing we did. You know, like we've tried things, whether they failed or if they just weren't for us, that's okay. You know, it's, it's, it's not that 100% the first thing you get, you know, I've got a daughter in college right now and she's, she's really struggling because she doesn't know what she wants to do. And she's like, mom, what am I supposed to do? I don't know where to continue this school, you know? And I just said, you know what? do what you got to do. Like some people have four degrees and they're, they're working in the warehouse at DigiKey, which there's nothing wrong with that. That's just what works for them. But I don't even have a college degree and I own a business that's very successful. So college isn't, and not saying to Carter's class, I'm not saying don't go to college. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't be disappointed if you can't figure it out right away. You know, and I think, I think your story just really nails that on the head, you know? Yeah. Um, does, any, does anybody have questions for Jordan? Question for you, Jordan, because that's very similar to what Brenda and I talk about a lot is that there's value in every step of the journey, that everything you do prepares you for the next. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, I guess my question would be, was there any ever a time that you felt like, like, I just can't do this. I just, I'm going to go back to the nine to five world. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it happened all the time. You know, you always have, you have those doubts in your head that, that creep in. And I remember one time very specifically, I was over 35 and I, uh, I went to a meeting. I got myself all hyped up over the weekend. I'm like, this is the week I'm going to make it happen. And I, I went, I drove 45 minutes to a meeting to where it lasted five minutes and I got absolutely shut down, like, like debilitating. Like they just, it was, it was bad. And I went back home and I lived in my one bedroom apartment on an air bed and, and I uh, had a pop-up tar a target desk for my desk and uh, you know, was massively in debt. And I went and curled up on my bed on like a Tuesday afternoon, just kind of curled up. And I remember I looked at, um, I was like, this isn't going to happen. I'm like, I'm not going to be like, something's wrong with me. Maybe the market's different here. I started making all these excuses and justifying it. And I actually hopped on monster.com and I started looking at different jobs. And if you guys ever want motivation, <laughs> look at the job postings on monster.com and what they entail, what the pay is. 
And after about a half hour of crying and, and looking at that and feeling sorry for myself, I, uh, I was like, there's no way, there's no way I will do that. And I got back up and, and I kept going, but yeah, those doubts, those, those feelings, man, they, um, they, 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 they pop up even, even today when you have a business, they pop up. Am I going to lose it? Right. Am I going to blow it? Like I got something good here, but you know, is the economy going to take it down or not? Am I going to take it down? <laughs> like there's all, there's always going to be these doubts that come up and, um, you know, you have to pick, pick and choose if you want to have the nine to five doubts or there's my cat, by the way, this is Mia. She's making a little cat cameo. Um, <laughs> thank you for that, Mia. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So long story short, yes, doubts uh, all the time. But yeah, I think it's important yeah. that, that we persevere. I, yeah, it's nice to hear your story. I can relate to that. Yeah. So Jordan, uh, probably being the old guy in the group, um, my experience has been through entrepreneurs and stuff. Most of them, seem like they have tried a number of different careers because uh and it's good because then they learn different aspects of everybody else's lives too and are able to serve them so and the first time i met jordan was when uh i don't know were you five six years old and he came to my house one night and knocked on the door and he said is lucas home and uh and i thought well what's lucas doing with this kid he's about twice his age or whatever but he was looking for michael and lucas and Somehow we ended up in a football game, and I hadn't known where Jordan came from that night. And he, uh, uh, it was well after dark. We were still playing football out in the yard, and uh, all of a sudden this car was going around looking for him. His parents had come to visit somebody down the road about a mile, <laughs> and they couldn't find Jordan. And they thought, my gosh, he must be in the river or something. And uh, all of a sudden they started listening, and they could hear noises coming somewhere from out of the dark, and they ended up in front of our house. and. Jordan, you need to go home now. <laughs> he hadn't told his folks where he took off to or anything. So, but yeah, well, you can't you can't follow the rules all, all the time, right, Kermit? <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and at the end, we'll have some more time for some more questions because I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions for Jordan and Brenda and Avery. Um, let's just for the people that do need to go, I want to make sure that we get this wrapped up on time. Um, I'd like to thank you guys so much for coming on and telling your stories, telling your journey. Um, I, I, I truly learn every time I hear, hear, hear people speak and you guys, you guys did it for me. So I appreciate that. Um, I'd like to thank Northern State Bank. They are our sponsor today. They are the reason our sponsors are the reasons that we don't have membership fees, that we can do this for free. Um, and, uh, we had a thing going on Facebook that if you shared the event, um, your name got put in for a drawing and our two winners of the Wired Bean gift certificates are Tate Sorvig and Stacy Meyer. Um, and we'll be getting a hold of you for how to get a hold of that. So watch for that too for next week or next month. Um, we have another door prize to give out. Beth, did you have a trivia question? I do. Um, so going back to Brenda and Avery, they described um, that their family are long-term residents of this area um, and felt that their commitment to the community desire to give back were really a driving force behind the creation of the Black Barn. So their trivia question is how many generations of their family have called Thief River Falls home? Right here, guys. Oh. Four. Five. 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 Palin Lindquist said five. I Beth, is that right? Five is the correct answer. All that right, Palin. It's correct. Okay, so Palin, you can stop by Hometown Realty and pick up. We've got uh, Trek mugs that you can pick from. We've got three different designs. So stop on by between the hours of nine to five and you can pick that up. Um, if you don't know where it is, um, it's at 601 Main Avenue North. Um, I'd like to thank yeah. everyone for coming and participating today. Um, Mr. Rogala's class, I hope you guys had some, got some good information out of our speakers today. Um, our next trek is April 6th. We do not know if it's going to be in person or if it's going to be via Zoom again. Um, either way we have it, we'll have it announced on the event, um, which is on Facebook. Um, and we hope you guys can all join us again next month, April 6th, Nicole Peterson 
and Darwin and Ashton Clementson are going to be our speakers, and they'll they'll uh, have some more great information for us. So, um, if you want to stay on and ask questions, if um, Jordan and Brenda and Avery have questions or time, please feel free to stay on and ask some questions. Otherwise, uh, yeah, hope to see you next month. I do have a question. Sure. All right. Uh, so my students, once I'm done, then you can leave. But uh, first of all, Avery and Jordan, thanks for sharing your story. Um, I just loved hearing your energy and I could tell the passion. And I know from a teacher's standpoint, that's the shot in the arm that teachers just love. You know, when you can see your old students and see the passion um, that they that they bring just, you know, to the presentation, it's just, uh, it's awesome. So uh, super proud of you guys and, and thanks for sharing your story. My question would be, if you could go back to yourself as a 16, 17, 18 year old, what advice would you give yourself? You know, and, you know, cause you got a bunch of 16, 17 and 18 year olds year olds in the in the chat right now you know is there something that you could go back and say oh, yeah. well I wished I did that or you know is there something you could tell your 16 17 or 18 year old self and that um, could go for any of you entrepreneurs yeah I, I don't know if I kind of to piggyback off what Jordan was already talking about is that just trust in the process trust your gut and trust that everything you do will prepare you for the next thing, um, whether it's waiting tables, whether it's, you know, working the till somewhere, everything that you do is a valuable skill that will prepare you for the next. You know, I've had a lot of odd jobs, the same as my mom. And um, I couldn't do the, I couldn't do what we do today had I not done all of those things. So, and like Jordan was saying too, you know, he graduated with a degree that maybe he didn't, really want or care about and that's kind of the boat that I found myself in so just do something I guess that's that's the other part of that is trust in the process but make sure you you keep going and keep keep doing something yeah to, to, to piggyback off that um one thing I, first of all I don't ever regret anything uh looking back I think I, I look back and I see every dot connected and I think that's one thing to also know for all of you guys is that as you go forward, like uh, uh, trust that the trust in the process, trust that the dots will connect. Uh, but one thing that I wish, I guess I would have done is, is kind of what Avery was saying, like, like try stuff, like just get to know different jobs, get to like, not just what's like taught in school, but like go job shadow Angie one day as a real estate agent and see what her day looks like. Right. Like go, go just see um, what it could be like to do something. Like I did, like I said, I did not know that there was until I was 20 years old, maybe, maybe I was naive and didn't and do a lot of research, but I didn't know that there was this concept of network marketing and really didn't know anything about entrepreneurialism. And if I did know anything about it, I didn't think that it was ever a possibility for me. It was for other people. And I think what's so important is to find out right now, you, you guys should all be in a very much a, a discovery phase and trying to figure out what do I kind of like, what, what, what feels right. And it, it some of you guys may land on something like, I know I want to do this and kudos to you. I think you're in the, uh, the, the minority on that, but for most of you, you're not going to really know. And I think what's important is that you just go try stuff and, um, and feel it out and, and learn right now, because that's the, the best thing that you can do. And don't be afraid to try. Like the, 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 that's the other thing is anyone who's successful. We talked about this already has, has failed in a lot of different things. So if you start a lemonade stand, <laughs> Uh, and it fails, like just mark it off your list. Like uh, it's it, it's okay to fail, but it's not okay not to try. And that's the number one thing between people who are successful or not is there's people, there's a ton of people have a, a lot of amazing ideas, but do uh, an idea is, is worth nothing unless it's acted upon. And so get good at taking action and, and feeling uncomfortable, like get, get comfortable being uncomfortable. Cause if you can't do that, um, you know, entrepreneurialism is going to be very tough if you, if you can't be uh, comfortable being uncomfortable. So try, just try, just try a bunch of stuff. I love that. I love that. And, and I'm going to make my daughter, this is being recorded and I'm going to make my college age daughter watch this because you guys, like I said, have, have said everything that I've been trying to say to her, but coming from mom does not mean as much. And I love that you're yeah. saying to try things because, um, when you get to be older, trying new things is more difficult. So try them when you're young and try different things and don't get discouraged if you don't make a million dollars when you're 20 years old. 
you you could die and never make a million dollars, but as long as you're in what I think Avery said it that you'll never work a day in your life if you love what you're doing. You know, you're gonna have to work through the jobs that you don't like to find out what you do like. But once you find it, it's it's so rewarding. So I think you guys, man, what a great, great thing for the the high school kids to be on listening to you guys because you you really just I think did a good job. I have, I have something I have, else to add, oh, just ahead, from Brenda. a different generation. Um, the one thing I would offer as advice, which I always tell my kids is, um, you notice this more and more as you age, life travels in circles. And every relationship that you build and every job that you um, do and, and every skill that you learn, you will circle back to it and circle back to it and circle back to it. When I was 13 years old, I started doing... Um, babysitting during my summer months and evenings and ended up having a home daycare, you know, 25 years later. I used to clean houses before my first son was born and I ended up 20 some odd years later having a successful home cleaning business. So I think there's value in everything you do. I think there's um, relationships to build. Do your best no matter what the job is. Always do your best no matter how menial you think it is because you're not just taking home a paycheck, you're, you're building yourself and you're giving yourself some valuable skills and you will circle back to those skills over and over and over again in life. That's, that's a, that's a different generations. Uh, bit 100%. Of yep. <laughs> I, would, I would also agree with uh, Brenda on that. But the other thing is whether it's waiting on tables or working at the gas station, engage with the people, your customers and the people you're dealing with, you are building a sphere of influence that'll take you your whole life. And as you increase that sphere of influence uh, and you go into your own business or something, you've got a lot of people to call upon and know. Um, you know, I, I started out working in the restaurant business at third base when I was 16 years old and we had some great times doing that and uh, did carpenter work, did all kinds of things, but people make a real difference. Uh, so, and the other thing I encourage people, if you think you're ever going to want to own a business or whatever, or be in sales, get involved in your community. It doesn't matter yep. if it's a church or whatever, build your sphere of influence. Uh, and at one time I was in the Amway business too, and they had a, I had some of the most awesome um, motivational speakers and stuff, but uh, that was the thing they preached, sphere of influence. Once you get past your family and friends is when you can really start making money. I want to piggyback off what Kermit just said, because I, I want one more thought to share that I think is, is so important. Um, you know, it's, it's about who you surround yourself with. And, you know, if you have, and it's so important when you're 16, 17 years old too. Like if you, if you have, you know, if, look at your five closest friends, the people you spend the most time with, I think this is a Zig Ziglar quote, but if you have five um, unhealthy friends, you'll be the sixth, right? If you have five, um, five uh, friends who always get in trouble, you'll be the sixth. But if you have five friends that are wealthy, right, and do all the right things, you will be the sixth. And so um, it's so important. Like, I, I mean, that is such a, I was blessed to have such amazing friends, you know, growing up and people that inspired me and that were good people. And, um, you know, that's carried out, you know, to, to now. And I just forever and ever focus on who you're spending your time with because whoever you spend most, you'll, you'll, you'll end up being just like, could I ask a quick question before I have to leave or is someone else have to go somewhere? I'm good. Okay. Um, so I love everything you guys said. I'll try to be redundant, but it just reminds me of one of my favorite quotes and that's failing happens. It's, it's your choice if you want to fail forward or fail backward. So you guys encapsulated that perfectly. I'm not going to be redundant and repeat everything you said, but my question is, um, I love hearing about where you guys have been, where this is for both businesses, where, what, where do you want to go from here? Right? So from the black barn, is it like, I want to be a boutique, or do I want to spread out and have multiple locations? From Jordan's perspective, he's already taken on three locations and real producers. Do you want to keep doing that? Or do you want to spread out under other industries? I know I'm talking really fast, but I'm running out of time. So um, generally speaking, I loved hearing where you're coming from. Where do you want to go from here? Brenda, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, being the age that I'm at, I'm happy just keeping it small scale. I'm, I'm hoping that... Um, I can build it into something that I can pass on to Avery to run on her own. She'll, she'll take it and run far and wide. She's got lots of grand ideas. She wants- um, When my kids aren't- Yeah, when they're not- training. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we would like to 
hopefully maybe introduce a little coffee shop area or a little sandwich shop sometime to make it more of a destination. Uh, we experience a lot of people coming from pretty far. So we'd like to offer a little bit more. Um, that's probably in the near future. Beyond that, I'm going to leave that up to Avery and have her do whatever she wants with it as, and then I'll, and then I'll be her assistant. <laughs> our, our first step is going to be to add food to the mix. My husband's a chef, so we actually just purchased a food truck. So we're going to oh. have a food truck full time here at Black Barn that can come stop out, get a bite to eat, shop. So that's, that's step one of the next phase. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I would say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. And so I've, uh, I'm, you know, I'm already collaborating with some other people and friends and stuff on just different business opportunities and ideas and where to put, invest money and, and, um, you know, currently I have five different streams of income and I'd love to, to and keep in growing, you know, growing that. And so, um, you know, I love what I do. I'm growing my team and hopefully, you know, we can get real producers to where it's pretty self-sustaining and I can kind of step back and start focusing on some other things. But um, right now it's, it's definitely growth mode with adding these two businesses on. That's awesome. Very cool. Thank you. Can I ask one question? Um, Somebody had messaged me. Um, they were wondering, um, you know, what um, what mentors you had or where could they go, uh, support groups, um, to reach out to just, um, you know, um, how, you know, how they first started or, you know, did you have a mentor, um, anybody that you could go talk to to help you through some tough spots? I think for me, my mentor, without knowing she's probably my mentor, um, is Nancy Hendrickson from Time Well Spent. I, I, I worked for her, for her for a couple of years and I really fell in love with the, um, what she provided the community. You know, people walking through the door and being greeted by name and a place to sit down and spend quality time with um, the people they love or just having a quiet time to themselves to go get inspired. Um, that's what she brought to our community and she brought you know, beautiful things to bring to your home and make your home beautiful. And that's what really um, motivated me to want to, to, to want to provide that when she no longer, um, she just, you know, came to a time in life where there were other priorities and she was ready to, to close that part of her life. And I just thought, well, now, now is a really good time for me to maybe pick up where she left off. Not that I'm ever going to be as good as she is, but we try to try to fill the void. Cause I know that was something the community had really, um, responded well to is having a place like, like her, her little shop. So she has provided me with, um, store displays and really good advice and a phone number to call if ever I need it. And, and that's very valuable. And, and on that same note, I would like to just, um, thank this community for the, not just the customers for their support, but the other business owners that have really, really gone above and beyond to reach out to us and, and make us feel supported and offered collaborations. It's, it's more than humbling and we are so grateful. And it just speaks to this community. And, you know, you expect friends and family to be supportive. You don't, you don't, I, we didn't expect that from other business owners and we are just so grateful and, and, and really, really um, humbled by their support and the connection that we've made with people that we didn't really even know in the same little town. And it's probably the most valuable thing Absolutely. we're taking from this is the connection with the people that come through our door and the connection with other business owners. We've, We've really, we've really learned a lot. That's great. And that's, that's, that's what Trek is about too. You know, we're, you know, the connection, K-I-N-N. -N, we say we're all family here. It's the connection yeah. that we're all trying to get. So um, it is 10 o'clock. We've already gone way past our time. So I want to thank you guys. And I want to thank Jordan. You guys have been amazing. Thank you everybody who was on. Um, remember April 6th, uh, Nicole Peterson and Darwin and Ashton Clementson oh. will be here. And uh, we hope to see you guys all again. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody.